Hello, I'm Designer Dave, and I've been having trouble putting my videos together. They actually require a lot more editing than I initially realized. I recognize that I need to get content out faster. Um, unfortunately, it's been raining a lot in my area, so what that tends to do is the mic picks up some background static. Right now it's at a low point, so hopefully it'll be okay, but it's uh, not, not conducive to recording high quality audio or making good video. Not that I have high quality equipment, it's just um, <clears throat> it exacerbates the problem. What I thought I would do is find a way to get quicker content out, and the best way to do that is talking head stuff. I watch Philip DeFranco, for example, and he does really good content, and it's, you know, a lot of research, and then it's relaying that information to people and giving his opinion on it. Uh, I don't necessarily want to do that, but um, what I can do is tell you stuff that I know and experienced. <clears throat> so what I thought I would do is uh, my origin story. <laughs> Not that I think I'm a superhero, just that it might be interesting to know how I got started in the game industry. Yeah, so back in 1998, I was working at a technical bookstore while I went to college. Uh, this was to make ends meet. You know, it wasn't working because, you know, I was getting $6 an hour. <laughs> at $6 an hour, you can basically maybe pay for lunch and, and maybe dinner if you're on your own at college but you're not going to be able, be able to pay the next year's tuition or anything else. And so I was on the verge of uh, effectively dropping out. But I, I was trying to stick with it. I wanted to get my degree. That, that didn't end up happening. But while I was working at the bookstore, there was a game section of the bookstore. I had always been into games. Like, I grew up with uh, a Mac Plus, and, like, I played on the Apple IIe. We, you know, we played um, the original Pirates and... Uh, Battletech, by the way, I'm very much looking forward to Harebrained Scheme's uh, new Battletech. Please release soon, please. Uh, so back then, I didn't, uh, I didn't really know what I was going to do with my life. I thought I was going to be a writer. I thought I was going to be a journalist. More writer, more fiction, not journalism. Uh, so what ended up happening was um, my money for college was running out. So I wasn't going to get my degree. And I had always told myself, if you want to write, just write something, anything. Back then we didn't really have blogs and things like that, but I started some short form writing, but I realized there was no money. I wasn't going to make any money off of that. It just wasn't at the stage where it is now where you can put up a blog and put up YouTube and do a vlog and then get advertising revenue. That just, there was no infrastructure for this. My roommates at the time, I lived with three uh, Chinese dudes <clears throat> who all played StarCraft all the time. So I was watching StarCraft, and I'm like, hey, that's pretty cool. So I gave it a try, and I enjoyed it. And I was like, you know, um, you know, I've grown up with computers. Like, I, when I was a kid, I had a laptop that would constantly, something would fail on it. I'd have to take it apart, put it back together. And so I had a bunch of technical knowledge. You know, I, I was on AOL when it first started. I was on Prodigy. Uh, not when it first started, but later on. Uh, Prodigy's gone now, but it was a service similar to AOL, more like a public forum but these were internet communities and so I was pretty technically oriented I knew a lot of games like I'd played the old Commander Keen on my laptop Dark Castle on the Mac Plus and again I had all the consoles so I played like a million games on the Nintendo Entertainment System so why don't I go work in games I love games that seems like a good career for someone who loves games <laughs> so let's go work on games Starcraft was a big deal to my roommates, and I'm like, ah, this is a pretty cool game. That's the rain. Probably ruining this video. I'm gonna keep going and hope that it's okay. I was gonna check out Blizzard Entertainment, so I sort of called 411, and if, you, if you're not aware, 411 is the number that you used to call, I don't know if you still do, to get uh, a business number. So I called 411 and I said, hey, do you have the number for Blizzard Entertainment? And they were like, yes, here you go and they gave me the number for Blizzard Entertainment. Now, I didn't know that Blizzard Entertainment was located in Irvine. I went to UCI, University of California, Irvine, so it was complete coincidence that the first company that I thought I would try to work for happened to be in the same city that I was living in. Thinking nothing of it, I didn't know the circumstances of that. I called the number for Blizzard. They were quite nice. I talked to the receptionist. I'm like, hi, do you need anyone who knows Macintosh computers? Because that was my thing at the time. I was a big Macintosh guy. At the technical bookstore, I managed the Macintosh section of books. 
and I was just like big into Max. And this is back when Max were like really at a low point. They, Steve Jobs had left. The the company was like in shambles. They were making there were clone Macintosh computers that were sponsored by Apple. So it was not a good time for Macintosh computers. It was six dollars a share. I remember that specifically because I kept looking at it, going, "God, I wish I could buy some shares of Apple stock right now." And everyone told me I was crazy, and I'm like, no, you don't understand. Steve's going to come back. Apple's going to be great again. No one believed me. That's another story. Uh, I said, do you need anyone who knows Macintosh computers? And they're like, uh, I don't know. Let me check with uh, Chris Sigety, the guy who runs the quality assurance department. So they passed me through to Chris. He's like, oh, hey, you know Macintosh computers? I'm like, yeah, I've used them pretty much my whole life. I'm the, I would consider myself expert level at Macintosh computers. He's like, oh, that's great, because we need people to come in to test Diablo for the Macintosh and StarCraft for the Macintosh. I'm like, oh, sweet. Because, uh, you know, they'd already released on PC, but they were making Macintosh versions of those. I went in for an interview. I went in in, you know, like a t-shirt and shorts, you know, the same thing I would always wear. And everyone there was wearing like t-shirt, jeans, and shorts. So I fit right in. Uh, I sat down for the interview. Uh, he asked me some questions about my experience with stuff. And I walked away, you know, feeling pretty good about the whole thing. And, like, it looked like a really fun place to work. This is back in the day when they were part of Sendent Software. So back then, the QA, QA building was separate from the development building. QA place had, like, um, these open desks that were, like, attached to each other. Open desks attached to each other. So, like, here's a desk, here's a little wall, and here's another desk over here. So there was, like clusters of four of those and then there was like these walls of little cubicles which is where I ended up working because you know I was a peon. So I walked away feeling pretty good. I, I went back to the bookstore, was kept working there um, while I was waiting for an answer and I think it was like a month later? It might even have been like just a couple weeks. Most people wait many months for Blizzard to get back to them but it was like a couple weeks and I got a call while I was at the bookstore and it was Chris and he was like hey Dave I realize you work at the bookstore and I'm like, oh yeah, right, because I'd given them the work number so that they could check my references. He was calling to offer me a job, so he's like, so would you like to to uh, you know work at Blizzard in QA? He's like, now I I understand. He, he he was doing a sales pitch because he wanted me to come in because he needed Mac guys. So he was like, now I understand it might be a, a, a pay cut. We can we can only offer you eight dollars. I'm like, uh, I get to work at a dream job for more money, and I get to you know work on games all day uh so what i told him was like no no working on games is my dream job a a any amount of money is fine <laughs> not he because he didn't know he was paying me three more dollars than i was earning at the time you know i told my boss hey i got this great job uh lined up now at blizzard you know i have to give you my two weeks notice he's like oh you know we could bump you up to six dollars and fifty cents i'm like yeah no that's all right <laughs> this is my dream job like back then I was much more diplomatic than I am now I, I made it all about like this is my dream job this is what I want to do and it was true everything about the job was going to be better so uh, and, and that's basically it like I went into Blizzard and I started working there in quality assurance and, you know I've been in the game industry for 18 years now uh, at a variety of companies and I got started because I ran out of money for college, had to drop out, and needed a way to make a living, and I thought games would be a, a good answer to that, and and coincidentally went to school in an area where Blizzard was located, and, and just happened just happened to have the correct knowledge about Macintosh computers that they needed at that time. From there, it, it pretty quickly accelerated into game development. It was less than two years that I went into level design, and even while I was in QA, I was working on level design stuff. Um, but we'll talk about level design another time. I just wanted to give you an origin story and get this out there while I'm editing my paper prototype uh, video, which is coming along. It's going to be cool. By, uh, if I get everything right in the video that I want to, you're going to be able to learn how to create your own board games um, for real with printouts. And from that, you can... Um, you would be able to make your own board games and like send it off to a printer and have a, a game of your own, uh, which I think is pretty cool. And that's the first step towards learning the basics of game design. But it's, it was much more in depth <laughs> when I started recording those videos. It ended up into these segments of like 10, 20 minutes. And so I need more time for that. I will, I think what I will have to do is uh, create the first segment 
of creating the, the board, and that's like a segment on level design. And I will release that first, and then I will go into the different areas of game design necessary to create the full board game to your style and preference. So that's what I'm working on. I didn't want to be radio silent. I'm, my intention is to have something every week, if not multiple times a week. And I think if I do these short form verbal essays, maybe I can get more content out there that's interesting to you and uh, give you an update at the same time as to how I'm progressing on things. So I'm going to do some quick edits on this and hopefully it comes out good and hopefully the rain doesn't block out the sound of my voice. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.